Let's go. <laughs> Here comes the copyright! The copyright claim! And it's not from Kenmon! Apparently, the NFL got a little problem. I think I have three companies claiming the fucking thing. Three! Three, which are all subsidiaries of other companies. The fuck? But it's okay. I'ma still use this beat. You know why? Because it's time for that NFL preview. Yes, sir. You know how it is. Big motherfucking sinners in the building. Hollywood J. Black is in the building. Beat in the building. NFL copyrights in the building. OBS. The same one invited. <laughs> one place. Let's go. Woo. I like that right there. Wow. All right, all right, all right. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, to this. NFL Sports Show, which we show on both Facebook and YouTube at the same goddamn time. And you know what that means? Twice the copyright claims. Yes. Unfortunately, he is right. Uh, <laughs> so last week we talked about the AFC, the NFC East. Today we are talking about that dirty, dirty, the AFC and NFC South. South, S-O-U-F. South. So, how you doing today, Hollywood? Man, you know, uh, it's 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 Tuesday. I had to pull a double, not a double, but a but some extra hours today. I've been up since six o'clock in the morning for no apparent reason at all, other than to be up at six o'clock in the morning. But Big Sin has been up since you know five o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. His time. Yep. Every day. Every day. <laughs> but it's okay. We were doing our research. We were getting all the graphics together, you know what I'm saying? Although he's had these graphics up for the last week. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We don't want to ruin the narrative, okay? The point of the conversation is that we are here, we are live, we are ready for each and every one of you, all seven of you, okay? All seven of you who come watch us, we fucking love you. What do you want from the corner store, okay? You want beer, chips, cocaine, whatever. <laughs> so if you follow our podcast, you will see that Hollywood had the podcast up for five days, but did not advertise it at all. Uh- <laughs> it still managed to get a whole four viewers, okay? A whole four viewers. Don't- did we at least get more after the advertisements came out? Yes, actually. We are now up to 20. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Damn. Damn. So we are basically a mom and pop sports show. We we predict things better than ESPN. We did it a couple years ago. Last year was shaky, but two years ago, I almost beat Trey Wingo in the final overall. I was one game behind the son of a bitch. Better than ESPN, baby. (laughs) Woo! So we got the NFC South going the way we do this. We go from worst team to the best team in the division. And the funny thing about the NFC South is the team that won the division – did not win the Super Bowl. The team that finished second in the division did. So, yeah. without further ado, see, si, senor. I need you to go ahead and throw up the Hot Atlanta Falcons logo right quick. <laughs> Magic right there. And we are going to get right up into the Atlanta Falcons, who for the first time since 2010 will not have NFL All-Pro wide receiver Julio Jones on their roster. Um, it's a sad, it's a sad cold world, okay? It's a it's a cold, cold world out there for my man Julio Jones. Oh, he's in a, he's actually in a nicer place. Um, so it's a cold world for the Atlanta Falcons. So. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Because so. we're going to be talking about Julio when we get over to the AFC's house. So. Yeah, yeah, and... That, and 
we'll, 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 we'll get to that. But yeah, this particular situation, the Falcons are, we, remember we talked about this, Big Sid. Remember mm-hmm. we talked about this at the end of last year. Well, no, at the beginning of last year, our preview, we said. Yeah, when we, when we did this thing a year ago, yes. Yes. We said that if the Falcons didn't get it done this year, I wouldn't be surprised if everybody that makes that Falcons team the Falcons team is gone. I said, and, didn't I? and you know, for all intents and purposes, Todd Gurley had a decent season at running back for the Falcons. Um, Matt Ryan did Matt, what he could do with Julio Jones being hurt and having some fledging wide receivers. Their defense was absolute asshole trash. No, let's be real. Their defense was 28-3, okay? That's what they de- They was running the 28-3 defense. That's that's essentially, that's what I call it. Oh, Be- hold on, I got hold on, I got to sneeze real quick. I chew. <laughs> when, and when you run that 28-3 defense, you just, you sometimes you just don't play 60 minutes of football. Sometimes you only play about 30. Sometimes... Play about 45. Sometimes you might get a whole chance and play a whole 59 point th- and th- like 59 and 30, 30 seconds of football, okay? Well, at least this time, the 28-3 defense didn't consist of a corner bragging on Twitter that he picked off Tom Brady. Oh, no. But, you know, hey, listen. Let, let's, 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 let's be real. So last year, I came out with a meme. And I, I came out with a meme video posted across. And I said that there's no way that the Falcons lose from behind three games in a row. Because if you do, then you become obviously the worst team in the world. What happened against the Bears? Again? Yeah, but we didn't we didn't factor in Jacksonville and New York being as bad as they were last year. So Yeah, but listen. <laughs> listen. Jacksonville and New York had every right to be bad. The when when your only shining thing on your team in Jacksonville is Gardner Minshew, okay? Who for some reason, Ur, uh, yeah, well, I'll say it later. But I'm just gonna say it now. For some reason, Urban Meyer is trying to act like there's a quarterback competition right now. <laughs> yes. Shot, uh, yes, they, they spent all that time on a number one draft pick trolling the Jets in order just to bench uh, uh, Trevor Lawrence. Because, you know. The where the owner of the Jaguars treated out, oh, thank you, New York, for beating the, Ra- the Raiders. No, That's where you knew the ultimate tank was on. <laughs> exactly. So we can't blame. We, we can't. The, so the Falcons had no right being as bad as they were last year. Hey, they got, at least they got. A future tight end in Kyle Pitts, which I still think is a high pick to take a tight end. I mean, he's no Rob Gronkowski, okay? I mean. Um, I hope the Falcons realize that people in the NFL are bigger and faster, and they can keep up with these types of tight ends. They should have at least got a first for Julio. I'm just saying. <laughs> Hold on, what did they get for Julio? Hold on, they got, they got what, a third? Yeah, they probably got like a fifth round draft pick and a ball of Duce. Yeah, Bill Belichick uh, for sure had that draft. Um, he was <laughs> he was helping out his boy Mike Vrabel. He's like, um, yeah, here's some Pringles. Um, <laughs> you're not gonna ride on my boat. Um, so so now it's just Matt Ryan, who I'm surprised hasn't been traded yet at this. Point. Matt Ryan uh, in, in a in a quarterback pandemic, they could not trade Matt Ryan. They re-signed him. Yeah, they re-signed him. That's what I'm saying. In a- and, you know, I, I can tell you why Matt Ryan stayed. Because he has absolutely zero competition with A.J. McCarron and Felipe Franks as his backups. But, dude, they could have traded him to Denver. Denver could have lowballed them as much as, as – as much No, as because De- he'd have competition in Denver and Teddy Bridgewater. You really think Teddy Bridgewater is going to take uh, – well, he's going to be the starter. But you think that Matt Ryan is not a better quarterback than Teddy Bridgewater? I did not say that. I said he would have competition. At mean? least here, at least here in Atlanta, he's got a nice arena. He's got some nice barber shops. He's got some nice barbecue joints, and he can not have to ever worry about his job. And he's still going to make twenty eight million dollars a year. Man, man, my, my, my man Matt Ryan about to get that Elway uh, Shanahan treatment. Okay, and for those that don't know, 
Look up Elway before uh, between before before they won the two Super Bowls. Look up the two years that John Elway was with Denver before they won the two Super Bowls, and you'll understand what I'm talking about. Um, but but all jokes aside, people, all jokes aside, um, this is going to be a rough ass season for the Falcons. It's would Matt you, Ryan. Would you like to hear what they have in that running back room? Who? We have a Deontay. Oh no, ladies and gentlemen, not Deontay Freeman. Deontay Foreman. Foreman, that's right. We got to get DF back in here. No, not Devontae Freeman. We <laughs> fucked that up, ladies and gentlemen. We have a wide receiver in that running back room by the name of Cordell Patterson. Yeah, Cordell Patterson. Oh, is he back now? He's back in Atlanta. Yeah, he's in Atlanta. But the the go to piece in Atlanta was a go to piece in Carolina. When Christian McCaffrey was hurt last year, and that is Mr. Mike Davis. Well, yes, Mike Davis is there. Of course, you got Calvin Ridley there as now the number one stud, right? Um, Calvin Ridley is not on this team. Where's Calvin Ridley? I don't know, but he is not on this Falcons team. Hold on. The running back room is Mike Davis, Deontay Foreman, oh, Javion Hawkins, Caleb Huntley, Quadri, Allison, Cordell Patterson, and their fullback, Kevin Smith. Oh, okay. Hey, you're talking about Smith. running backs. I was talking about Calvin Ridley, the receiver. Oh, no. Say- okay, so you want to jump the receivers. We have Christian Blake, Frank Darby, Trevor Davis, Russell Gage, Juwan Green, Antonio Nunn, Calvin Ridley, Chris Rowland, Talis Sharp, Austin Tremel, and Alamai Zacchaeus. So what I'm seeing out of the wide receiver room is Calvin Ridley, you're going to be a pro bowler. Yeah, or... Or you're not going to have anything because they're just going to triple team you. Yeah, pretty much. That's the, There you go. There's the, there's the right answer, okay? But That's they have the Hayden Hurst and Kyle Pitts at tight end. Which makes me wonder, if you had Hayden Hurst, why did you draft Kyle Pitts? Hayden Hurst Because he's Kyle good. Pitts. They did not want the 49ers or anybody like that to get Kyle Pitts. That's why. All right, so where did the Falcons draft? They were like, what? How many picks did they have? Fourth. They're, no, they they were they they took Kyle Pitts at four. All right, the see. highest selected tight end in NFL history. But you don't think they could have traded down and still got Kyle Pitts? Oh no, they could have. Okay, I'm about to say because listen. But no, actually, they might not have been able to because the Raiders were at six, I think, and the Raiders wanted them to to team up with um homeboy. So. Man, listen, that is uh, – let, let's talk about teams wanting people, okay? Oh, I know. How do you think, how do you think the Washington Redskins suckered the Denver uh, – I mean, suckered the uh, – I said the Redskins. The Washington football team, excuse me, suckered the New York Giants in a drafting Daniel Jones. Oh, we want Daniel Jones. We think, we think highly of Daniel Jones. And now Daniel Jones is getting tossed under offensive line, defensive line as they fight, and he's just laying on the, on the bottom of them. Exactly, exactly. Everybody wants to talk people wanting people. No, listen, it's all a, it's all a game. It's gamesmanship. It's the greatest game of chess in the history of ever. Watch the football scene. Ha ah, ha! We suckered you out the quarterback that actually wanted you, and then they got suckered because um, they, they took the quarterback the Giants were going to draft, and now he's in Pittsburgh. Yeah, exactly. Uh- <laughs> Guess who won? No one. That's who. N- neither. Uh, <laughs> and that's what happens, people. That's you know who else? You know who else lost even more? Who? Any bathroom attendants to Tahoe? <laughs> I'm just listen. I'm just saying. Okay, they could have. Ta- Atlanta Falcons could have taken Jamar Chase. They could have taken Waddle. Okay. They needed another receiver. They could have taken Devonte Smith. That would have been a nice little addition for fucking Matt Ryan. What are you talking about, man? Russell Gage is the future. I just picked a random name off of that wide receiver corner. I know. (laughs) (laughs) Hell, if they really wanted to, they could have fixed the defense. They could have asked the defense, hey, defense, how many minutes of football would you like to play? And if it's anything less than 60, guess what? You don't draft them, okay? Well, okay, so let's talk about the draft real quick. One, two, three, four people were drafted on offense, and that was number one, Kyle Pitts. Then at number 68, offensive guard out of Michigan, Jalen Mayfield. Then at 114, a center out of Stanford for was Drew Dowman. And they did draft a wide receiver. Are you ready for this draft pick of a wide receiver, sir? Sure. With the 187th pick, they drafted Arizona State wideout Frank Darby. 
I don't know who the hell he is. I I um maybe we'll find out who he is. Maybe he maybe fight. whoever maybe whoever made that draft choice said that the way I did. And they're like, oh shit, he's that hype. He's like Herman Edwards trusted him, and so do I. And oh. Herman Edwards lost the last six games of his college coaching. Yeah. Anywho, <laughs> um, they have a they have a defensive back named Dwayne Johnson who's not the Rock. Um, <laughs> let's see, defense: Derek Abrams, um, T.J. Green, Richie Grant, Darren Hall. That's their backfield. Deron Harmon is probably the best person back there. Um, let's see, what do they got? A linebacker. They got Brandon Copeland. Dante Fowler Jr., who has been a draft bust. The only time he was good is when he had um, Nadanka Su and Aaron Donald in front of him. Mm-hmm. Um, I am not seeing any much at all bright spots on this team right now, sir. He said bright spots. So but they got Grady, Grady Jarrett's good. So this is this is the part where I come in. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Where is it at? They've got no hope. They've got no hope. They've got last place in the division because they trash hopes. So this is the point. This is the part of the, uh, the the game where I tell you that teams converted over 41% of their third downs against them. Um, Over 43% of their fourth downs against them. They were how the hell? How the hell are you giving up forty three percent on fourth down? <laughs> when your coach, your head coach, was supposed to be a defensive guru, they were also giving up sixty four percent in the red zone. You want to know why Dan Campbell was a defensive guru? Because he had their fucking Richard Sherman, fucking <laughs> Cam Chancellor. Uh, they had their they had the twenty fifth ranked defense along with having the twenty sixth ranked offense. He had the Legion of Boom. That's the only reason he got this job. Well, in this, in the Falcons, he had the Legion of Boom. And the ba- no, you know what he had, you know what he had, had in Atlanta? What? The Legion of Dud. The Legion of Dud. So. So now Arthur Smith is taking over as the head coach. And yeah, that, good luck, sir. Good luck. <laughs> Godspeed, my man. Godspeed. Okay, his offensive coordinator is Dave Ragone, who I don't know much about. Charles London is quarterback's coach. I'm looking for any... Oh, TJ Yates is a passing game specialist. TJ Yates never finished a season with more than 20 catches. TJ Yates the of Hawaiian Sophie fame? Yes. You're talking about the TJ Yates that was perennially... Do you know TJ Yates is a playoff staple? You know why? Because every time Matt Shaw would get close to the playoffs, he'd get hurt. And guess who would take over? TJ, God bless him, fucking Yates. That's right. right. So what I'm going to need from you right now, sir, (laughs) is to go ahead and um, make that schedule magically appear above us. Oh, you mean, uh, hold on. Let me uh, me make it disappear. Oh, not that button. Where's the button? No, not that button either. Where's the button? Where's the he forgot how to use OBS again. Oh, that's the fucking button. God damn it. Son of a bitch. Crack whore Barbara Streisand. Hold on. There this is go. a break brought to you by Right Fresh. If you want hip hop lyrics on your air fresher, pick up some Right Fresh. Use the code in the link below and you get a free month on Hollywood J Black. Yes. Yes, you do. Yes. Except this, uh, this little light of mine. It just made this shit big for no fucking reason. This little light so, of mine. Well, he's adjusting this. I'm going to go ahead and start explaining the schedule before he can see it. Uh, they open up this season with the Eagles. Then they're at Tampa, at the Giants. And they got the football team, then the Jets, and a week six bye week. Then they come back for a very long, long, long run here. At Miami, Carolina, at New Orleans, at Dallas, and the New England Patriots, at Jacksonville, Tampa Bay, at Carolina, at San Francisco, Detroit, at Buffalo, and then finish off with the New Orleans Saints. Yeah, all bad. Um, um, we could agree. Well, I don't know. With the way that the Eagles are now, who fucking knows? Um, yeah, that, that's one of those give or take games. 
Yeah. <laughs> it could end up in a fucking tie. Who knows? All right. So I say they split. They're, they're, the, they're not the cream of the crop of the division anymore. So we'll say that they split with the, the brand new New Orleans team, the Carolina teams. And, and, uh, and I think Sam Darnold's actually going to sweep the Falcons this year. Not in Carolina. Sorry, they'll 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 they will. Matt Ryan is a ten times better quarterback than uh than Sam Darnold will ever will be. But Sam Darnold has better weapons this year. Man, obviously Calvin Ridley and whatever the fuck guy you named that got drafted in the hundred and sixty the hundred and eighty seventh pick in the fucking draft. That, that's all they got. And Matt Ryan's just gonna have to make it work. Oh, and Kyle Pitts. Excuse me. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, but the Panthers got Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> I okay, split. They'll split it. I will say they split. They won't split with the Bucks though. Sorry, they're, they're going to split with New Orleans. They're going to split with the with the Carolina. The Bucks are going to sweep them out. Okay. All right, so I'm going to give you my prediction first. Okay. I'm giving them four and thirteen. Oh, I forgot that. I still keep forgetting that there's seventeen games in this shit, and I feel bad. Yes. I think they. I honestly think they beat both New York teams in the first in the first five weeks. Um, oh, that's easy. Okay. That's I easy. think they. I think they beat the Jaguars, and I think late, maybe New Orleans is resting people or Buffalo is resting people. They might eke out one of those two games. I will say six and eleven. I have them beating, going, winning two games against the division, right? We, mm-hmm. we agree on the two New York teams, right? So then they're going to steal three somewhere. I think they can steal Philadelphia. I think they can steal Jacksonville. That should be fairly simple. Um, and I think that they could steal one against Detroit. Detroit's interesting this year. Yeah. But I still think they could steal one. I think it's a thie- it's going to be a thievery. Okay, it's going to be... Right. But so six, six and eleven. I got him for six and eleven. All right. So now I need you to go ahead and put up that Carolina Panthers logo right above us. Current learner Panthers. Yes, sir. Current learner Panthers. We'll get to Curl Panthers. This is another team that had issues last year with Christian McCaffrey being out most of the season. The aforementioned Mike Davis was decent. Um, he was. They've been five and eleven the past two seasons. And they want to make the playoffs this year. They have a new quarterback in the system, and Sam Darnold, who was shit on by Adam Gase, like most of the people who play for him. Um, they weren't that horrible last year. They did have some bright spots, and we'll get to those here in a minute. You got that logo up there, sir? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Now, the reason I ask that, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know, I can't see. No. So. I mean, he's, um, he's not only blind, but he's crazy, but we'll love him nonetheless. And, yeah, I still make sense 99% of the time. Yes. <laughs> so we have the Carolina Panthers who drafted something they very need, they very well needed at with the num- with their number eight pick, and that was J.C. Horn, a cornerback out of South Carolina who had a fantastic college career. Um, they also made some additions at wide receiver, tight end, running back. So they, they drafted pretty much across the board. Yeah, this is – Finally, a team that's rebuilding the right way, right? They're, they're just getting everybody and finding a way to try to make this team better. Um, I'm looking at their I'm looking at their quarter their coaches list right now. Um, Matt Rule is their head coach. Yeah. Quarterback coach is Sean Ryan. Yeah. Um. Tony Sperano Jr. is their assistant offensive line coach. Yeah. Um, let's see. Any big names on defense? No, 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 no. Okay, so their quarterback room consists of Sam Darnold, Will Greer, and PJ Walker. Sam Darnold is going to easily win this starting job. You know what? I wonder what happened to the one dude. The one Who? dude from la- was it last year or was it the year before? The, Are you talking um, about Kyle, Kyle Allen? Yeah. Remember, he went to Washington and got knocked the fuck out last year. Oh yeah, that's true. He followed Von Vera, Remember? Yeah, that's right. It was so, on, it was on that uh on that um what is it uh every any given Sunday shit where where Ron Rivera left the squad and took his quarterback with him. <laughs> yep, and then he got hurt and brought back the comeback kid Alex Smith because because right. Kyle Allen got killed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah because yeah old boy started and then Kyle mm-hmm. Allen started 
And yeah, because they, they, they fell sour on what's his name? Well, we forget him, but it's the guy that we talked about because that, that, that Washington fleeced the, uh, the Giants on. Yep. Still the most hilarious shit to this day. But so I see I see a very interesting football name. Uh, which, which, what, give me a football name, sir. He's a running back. Uh-huh. His name is Chubba Hubbard. Chubba Hubbard. Oh, my God. That's a Hall of Fame name. That's a Hall of Famer right there in the fucking making. I, just, I, I want to support this man now. He's a running back? Yeah, okay, their running back, their running back room is Reggie Bonifin, Spencer Brown, Trenton Cannon, Darius Clark, Chubba Hubbard, Christian McCaffrey, Rodney Smith, and Rod Smith at fullback. Chubba Hubbard. Chubba I love Hubbard. that name. I love that fucking name. Chubba Hubbard. Let's look I up. hope he's some big corn-fed white boy, too. My nigga Chubba. Hold on. No, he's one of them light-skinned brothers. I might go buy this man's jersey just because of his name. Here you go. He, he's what? He's a he's a light skinned brother from Canada. But he played. Oh, so he'll run you over and say, "Hey, hey, sorry." Yeah, his nickname. It was so his whole name is is Chuba Robert Shamar Hubbard, but they call him Chuba Chuba Hubbard. Okay, I like it. I like the name. Uh, Obviously, Christian McCaffrey is the man in this room. Yeah. Um, as long as he stays healthy. He is a top two running back in this league. Yeah. Um, keep in mind, they drafted Chubba Hubbard because uh, two years ago, um, when when college football was still a thing, he ran for 2,094 yards mm-hmm. at Oklahoma State. Yes, sir. Uh, um, so, and how do, and I tried to make this point to Hollywood when we talked about the AFC East and Sam Darnold, but Sam Darnold had his best statistical season with one wide receiver on his team, and he is back with Sam Donald. Now, Mr. Robbie Anderson, who honestly set the world on fire last year in Carolina, had one of the top seasons of the of the of the year. And people forget that DJ Moore is still on this Panthers team. Who is and DJ Moore is a very good wide receiver. Well, yeah, they became a um, they became a really really good dual threat for Teddy Bridgewater mm-hmm. last year. The problem with the Panthers always. Felt like, and oddly enough, Teddy Bridgewater alluded to this in an interview, is that they always they they got out coached. So it's no matter what kind of stats they put up, yeah. they always felt that they were getting out coached. Yeah. Um, and of course, the Carolina kind of downplays it, but that's actually a pretty serious thing. Like if you got to play Tampa twice a year, mm-hmm. you got to play you got to play Sean Payton, who's a very yeah. experienced if you, head coach. If you got Bruce, if you got Bruce Arians and Sean Payton across from you four times a year, yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> and you want to talk about getting out coached. Yeah, and we can take they're, a look. they're two of the best in the business. Yeah, and we're gonna take a look. At this. And, yeah. and we all know Bruce Arians doesn't coach the Buccaneers. Tom Brady does. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. <laughs> so what? So, what rookie wise, what are we looking at? No, so. In the rookies, they drafted. Um, they drafted, like I said, J.C. Horn from South Carolina, the corner. Mm-hmm. Terrence Marshall Jr., wide receiver from LSU, who had a good college career. Yeah. Um, Brady Christensen, a solid offensive lineman from BYU. Tommy Tremble from t- a tight end from Notre Dame. Chuba Hubbard, who we talked about. Davion Nixon, Keith Taylor, Deontay Brown, She Smith. Thomas Fletcher and Phil Hoskins round out the rest of the Carolina Panthers draft. Picks. That's a hell of a draft. They got a lot of picks. Shit. They they did. They had a good draft. Um, the tight ends: Tommy Tremble, the rookie; Giovanni Vici, who I think came in as a walk on late in the year last year. Yeah. Um, they 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 need tight end help. Yeah. Let's see. Offensive line. If their offensive line is going to be better than anything Sam Darnold had in New York. Yeah. Well, it was an interesting thought that the two, the three greatest players in Panthers history are a quarterback, a wide receiver, and a tight end. We got Cam yep. Newton, Steve Smith, and Greg Olson. Yep. They, they they have yet to find a replacement for Greg Olson. Um, and I don't think you could ever really replace Greg Olson. Greg Olson did so much and now sacrificed he, so much. Yeah, he was, a, he was a special tight end. He was a real team guy. Yeah. Um, on defense, we're looking at hmm, Kendall Donerson. Morgan Fox had a decent season last year. Mm-hmm. Daquan Jones, he he likes to pressure the quarterback. Yeah. Um, Bravon Roy, he had some highlights last year. We got 
over a linebacker core, Jermaine Carter. There's not really much to talk about Shaq Thompson. There's not a whole lot to talk about on defense here. Well, the thing the thing is what we got AJ Boye, the corner, is fantastic. Yeah. Well, we got to remember the thing that we have to talk about um the 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 Panthers didn't have really a bad defense. Like they were bad. They have a blue collar defense. Yeah. A lot of guys who do the work. Yeah, they they, they, they it's not like they were bad. They no. just they don't have a lot of big names except for AJ Aboye. Yeah. Um, and what the hell is the other dude's name? Was it was it Dante Jackson last year yeah, who had a big season? Yeah, I believe it's Dante Jackson. Yeah. He uh, their defense, their defense was middle of the road, right? It wasn't the best defense. Yeah. They, they ranked twenty one, which, given how many points are scored in the NFL, that's really not really that bad, right? But when you're the, better, you're better than the Cowboys and the Falcons and the Seahawks last year. Yeah, it was their 28th ranked <laughs> offense that couldn't fight their way out of a paper bag. Um, yeah. When you're only when you're converting only 39 percent on third down, um, and but yet somehow committing uh, uh, getting 55 percent on fourth down and scoring half of the time in the red zone, um, it, it's a problem. Bridgewater didn't really do them too many favors, and Teddy and. Dude, I'm not a Teddy Bridgewater fan, but I will defend him in saying he's still not comfortable on both legs. No, 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 he's not. And and they haven't. And Denver signed him. That's who's Denver. Like? Denver signed him je- to try and give Drew Lock some competition. To think that two years ago we were talking about Teddy Bridgewater taking over for Drew Brees because he looked that damn good in replacement, and yep. now. But, but then been- we saw then we saw Taysom Hill win four games without throwing the football. Jesus Christ! I still can't answer that question. All right, go ahead and pop up that um that beautiful Panthers schedule. Roll that beautiful bean. Let's please. see if he gets it. Let's see if he gets it in a meaningful amount of time this time. Meaningful amount of time, so I see how it is. You see how it is. Why are you gonna be so mean? Why you treat me so bad? <laughs> so okay, so gonna there get into go. the schedule here. They open up against the New York Jets. Then they got the New Orleans Saints at home. Then they're at Houston, at Dallas. Two very winnable games. Yeah. Um. Then you got the Eagles of Minnesota. Then they're at the Giants, at Atlanta. Two more very winnable games. Then they got New England at Arizona, the football team at Miami. Those four games right there are going to be tough as shit. Yeah. Patriots, Cardinals, football team, Miami, that is not a nice back-to-back-to-back-to-back. Well, their home schedule is fucked because – Yeah, then you got Atlanta, Buffalo, at Buffalo, Tampa. You finish off the season. Tampa, New Orleans, Tampa. Well, it's bad that you have to to play – some top ten teams at home from the jump. Um, See, I still, I still think Sam Donald is going to have a career day week one. I think he has that career day just to show the Jets, hey, I'm not this piece of trash that y'all thought I was. Oh, that's the preseason. Hold on, give me a second. No, go down where we where it says week one. I'm working on it. Okay, I'm, I, I'm, I'm working on that. Let's see. Yeah, the preseason was Indy, Baltimore, and Pittsburgh. God damn. So yeah, they do got the Jets. So I think that's that's where it starts. I said that's Sam. That's gonna be Sam Donald's breakout game right there. Yeah. So from the jump, we're talking about one and one Jets first three weeks. No, I think at home, I think two and zero. Oh. And see, this is what happens. Oh yeah, I forgot. No Drew Brees. Yeah. So the Saints are yeah, the Saints are in a weird place right now. I think I think they go two and zero oh at home, and everybody talks about the resurgence of the Panthers. Until- but then they could be they could be four and zero oh because at Houston, if Deshaun's not playing, that's a very winnable game. Yeah, and we don't know what the Cowboys are going to be. The Cowboys at home? Nah, it ain't happening. That that we don't know what they're going to be yet though. Cowboys at home? Ain't, it ain't gonna happen. They, 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 the Falcons they- went to San Francisco and beat them last year. The Cow- no, not last year. Not last year. The year before, when you guys went to the Super Bowl, the Falcons can upset teams. Jerry Jones will pay uh, other will pay Carolina Panthers players to not go off in this game. He has that kind of bread at home. No, nah, ain't gonna happen. Now back to what I was saying. <laughs> so then now 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 that they're three and zero, and then now they take that that L against Dallas. Everybody's like. 
Well, they had a tough game against Dallas. Do the Panthers look like a playoff team? And then, okay, they may beat the Eagles, so we'll say 4-1, and one, right? And Minnesota and Madison where Kirk Cousins is. Uh, it's at home. So it matters on where Kirk Cousins is. Actually, it matters if they're if they're actually running Dalvin Cook or not at this point. Uh, so, because remember last year, Kirk Cousins best quote last year. Well, we're not going to win if I keep throwing interceptions. Just stop throwing the fucking ball and hand it to Dalvin, dumbass. <laughs> this at home. So let's let's be nice. No, nah, I you know what I'll say four and two. Panthers look like a football to, uh, uh, playoff team at four and two. Then they destroyed the Giants. Okay. So they're five and two on the road. They get a road win. All right. Then they take an L in Atlanta. Then they're five and three. They they then the bus saw Bill Bell Bill Bus saw Belichick uh, comes through, and then they're five and four, and then the Cardinals five and five, and then the Washington Football Team five and six, and then the Dolphins come through five and seven, and then the fucking Falcons come through. Um, uh, we'll say we'll say six and seven, and then the Buffalo Bills come through, uh, six and eight. Buccaneers. It looks to me, it looks to me like you get ready to go six and eleven in this one, sir. Yeah, six nine, six and eleven, six and eleven. Because I think the the the, the uh, Saints are going to be are who we thought they were, and they'll figure shit out by then. It'll be six and eleven. Yeah, I, I actually had the same record written down. Yeah, yeah. I just you see, I like to hype you up sometimes just to get you going. Yeah. When it comes to some of these teams, because I know they're going to be bad. Uh, <laughs> all right, so the next graphic you are going to put up is for the reigning, defending, Super Bowl champion, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. As Pat McAfee said on SmackDown last a couple weeks ago, they call, he called it Champa Bay. Yeah, Champa Bay. Oh man! So there we go. This team, this team is coming off the most dominant defensive performance probably in Super Bowl history by having Patrick Mahomes go for a negative five hundred yards behind the line of scrimmage in one game. <laughs> they had that man running for his fucking which, life. Which is why the as soon as the very next day the Kansas City Chiefs cut their entire offensive line. Yeah. Well, are you surprised? <laughs> Are you fucking surprised? <laughs> oh my goodness! And so we said that we said last year that this team was going to be a problem. Yeah. Dur- during the season, they lost to teams like Chicago. They lost some weird games last year. Yeah. yeah. But when well, it came playoff time, Papa Brady put on his big boy pants and did his thing. Yeah, well, you know, you know how they have those groin pain games, right? You know, yep. this where it's just, with no off season last year. So. Yeah, no, no off season, no days off. Blah, 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 blah. You know how that shit goes now. So when things like this happen, um, they kind of just readjusted. Everybody, there was actually a point where people thought that Tampa Bay wasn't going to make the playoffs because mm-hmm. given the state of where the NFC was at that point, um, you had some legitimate contenders, um, which was, a, I guess, it was a beautiful thing. That the AFC North kind of collapsed, and so did the uh, the NFC. The, no, I mean the NFC North and the NFC East just completely collapsed. You know, um, one of the amazing things is that Tampa Bay did this off season. What? They lost zero. Let me again zero starters from offense or defense from last year. Everybody resigned. Well, you ask yourself this question: If you're on a team with Tom Brady, you really want to leave? Where are you gonna go? Where are you, where, where are we going? I think the only and Lashawn person- McCoy did not get re-signed, so he's not getting a free Super Bowl this year. No, no free Super Bowls, no free passes. Okay. So oh, uh, and they signed and they signed Giovanni Bernard. Oh Lord Jesus, they got they got deaf. They replaced they replaced Lashawn McCoy with Giovanni Bernard. Sometimes you stay in you stay in uh, Cincinnati long enough to where you finally get rewarded elsewhere, and that's exactly yeah, what happened. To where you end up with Tom Brady, much like Corey Dillon did a long time ago. <laughs> So, how did Kyle Trask fall to the 64th pick in order for Tampa Bay to draft him? I have no flip. The quarterback from Florida? I Nobody was paying attention to Florida last year. So, that's kind of what, what where that happened. I just saw that. I'm like, hold on. They got Kyle Trask? Hold the fuck yeah. on. Yeah, they got Kyle Trask, bro. So, they already <laughs> have their quarterback in the future who's local. Um, so, their, their draft last year. 
Um, obviously, Super Bowl champion, so they had late draft picks. They got Joe Tryon, offensive lineman for Washington, Kyle Trask, Robert Hainsey, an offensive tackle from Notre Dame. J- and they already had a good offensive line. Yeah. Um, Jay Leon Darden, a wide receiver from North Texas, KJ Britt from Auburn, Chris Wilcox, and Grant Stewart. Yeah. So they had a nice little. Life little put together O line. Little, right? little pieces, little pieces. Something to grow up. I mean, the whole thing is you got to operate at low money. Tampa Bay is, is figured to retool and get back to the Super Bowl again. And I honestly, at this point, don't see anybody maybe outside of San Francisco, maybe outside of uh, a, a, a defensive squad like, um, shit, I don't even know. San Francisco, the, your real Super Bowl contenders are literally going to be San Francisco, see back Seattle again until Russell Wilson falls apart. But you Buffalo, have, but what I'm talking about in the, in the West, oh, in, in, in the, the NFC, NFC, in the NFC. NFC. Yeah, it's really just that's really, Arizona. Arizona has, can threaten. Arizona can. Mm, I don't think that. Would you if you put Arizona against Tampa Bay right now? I don't know. Like, and it also does matter if AJ Green is healthy, like they say he is. Yeah. Then that receiving core is going to be a problem. Yeah. And if JJ Watt is anywhere near he, where he was a couple years ago, because he's actually healthy, yeah. that defense is going to be a problem. Yeah. Right, so it's it's really Arizona, Tampa, San Francisco. So that's it. In in the coaches, we already talked about Bruce Arians. Mm-hmm. Um, last year, it w- it could not be said enough. The job that Byron left was did as the offensive coordinator for this team. Yep, yep. And you see him doing that same job on the sidelines of these preseason games with Trav. Yep, yep. Like, you see him working with him. Like, he doesn't have to work with Tom Brady, okay? No, no. <laughs> and this is why I don't know why they have a quarterback's coach. This dude gets paid for doing nothing. Um, Clyde Christensen, he's yeah. just a body in the building. Well, that's why they had – I mean, when when Tom, Tampa Bay when Tom first got to Tampa Bay, Byron Leftwich came up to his house, le- uh, le- left the playbook on there. Be like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know how you got this playbook. And the funny thing is, Tom Brady's career, Byron Leftwich was drafted seven years after him and retired. <sighs> oh, and that's us also not forget. The defensive coordinator for the Buccaneers is the great Todd Bowles. <laughs> oh, yes. That's – Tampa's a problem. They're a whole-ass problem. A whole-ass problem. There's a reason why they're the third favorite to win the Super Bowl this year. Yeah. yeah, I think the number one favorite in the NFC right now. Yes. The AFC, you still have Kansas City and what, uh, either Tennessee or – no, Buffalo. Is Kansas City, Buffalo – and Tennessee's um, fourth. Fourth, yep. yep. So the quarterback room consists of Tom Brady, Blaine Gabbert, Ryan Griffin, and Kyle Trask. This thing, wasn't Blaine Grafford on the Bucks last year too? Blaine Gabbert? Yeah, he was there. He was there, so, yeah. yeah. Blaine Gabbert got a Super Bowl. That Just think about yep. that. I just want people to realize that that's a thing. Blaine Gabbert is a <laughs> Super Bowl champion. Listen to this running back core. Okay, you ready for this? Uh-huh. Giovanni Bernard, Leonard Fournette, Ronald Jones is – the second, Tremaine Pope, CJ Procise, and Keyshawn Vaughn. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a nice running back room there. And to think that even if somebody, people get cut, you know what I'm saying, for whatever yep. the case may be, that's still some depth. Now, and now, this wide receiver core in Tampa. Antonio Brown is allowed to play all season, and he's healthy. Yeah. So we have Antonio Brown. We have Jalen Darlin. Mike Evans, mm-hmm. Chris Godwin, Cyril Grayson, Tyler Johnson, Travis Jordan, Jaden Mc, Jaden Mickens, who's just labeled as a kick returner. That's all he does. Yeah. Scotty Miller, who is the Julian Edelman of this team, mm-hmm. and T.J. Simmons. That's five wide receivers that not many people can cover. No matter how many receivers that you put on a uh, 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 on a team, Tom Brady's going to find that one short. A white, uh, reliable white wide receiver with hands of God to dump off a slot pass to when he need uh, on third oh. and nine. Oh, I forgot to mention. I forgot to mention something. What? The tight end core: uh-huh. Cameron Bray, Rob Gronkowski, OJ Howard. Yeah, OJ Howard's back and he's healthy again. And Cameron uh, Bray's good. Yeah, Cameron Bray is is excellent. <laughs> we don't have to talk about Gronk because we all know what Gronk is. Yeah. Um, and but he will play better this season. My question is: Is will will OJ Howard and Rob Gronkowski coexist? Because that was a big storyline. 
But uh, when OJ Howard got hurt, that yeah, yeah, because Gronk is Gronk, and he was getting more respect than OJ ever got there. Well, you know, he want Tom's respect. Catch the goddamn football. Yep. Right, you know what I'm so over here on defense, we got this is just nasty too. William Golston. Yeah. We got Najankadam Sue. We got Via Vea. We got. This defense is nasty. Raheem Norris Roaches, Steve McClendon. Oh my God, that's just a defensive line. Yeah. Um, you go to the linebacker core. You got Shaquille Barrett. You got KJ Britt. You got Cam Gill, Kevin Hunter, Anthony Nelson, Jason Pierre-Paul, who had a comeback season, and the player that nobody knew about, who Tom Brady said at the beginning of the season would be the best player on the defense. And guess what? He was. Number 45, Mr. Devin White, the inside linebacker. JPP, JPP, the three-handed Three man. fingers. The funniest quote to come out of Tampa last year was Leonard Fournette saying, man, it was so hot, I thought he had five fingers. Yeah, right? <laughs> but Devin White, Devin White is a monster. Oh, man. Yeah, this is going <laughs> Back to what I said. The Buccaneers are the favorite to me in the NFC. I don't like I said outside of San Francisco and maybe a team like LA or and that's uh, only San, if San Francisco is healthy. That's only if San Francisco is healthy this year. Well, we got to make sure that we avoid the entire quarterback controversy, which we'll get to when we talk about the West. Because in spite of what people think, there's a quarterback controversy, and it's looking real 2012 ish. If you know what so I mean. It's all because Trey Lance had one big throw in that game. Not one. He had a few. And yeah, he, but the 80 yard one is the one that people are talking about. Yeah, but he, listen, it's looking real 2012 ish. I'm just going to tell you that right now. <laughs> looking real 2012 ish. All right, so what I need from you to do right now, sir, is what was that beautiful bead put it, footage and um, put up the schedule that is going to show the Dallas Cowboys have to open this season at Tampa Bay. Good God. I forgot that's actually a thing. On Thursday night. Because, you know, where the fuck. Oh, wait. Why can't, where's the book schedule? So while he's doing that, I will run it down while he's doing that. So they got the Cowboys, the Falcons, at the Rams, at the Patriots. Tom Brady's return to New England. <sighs> um, okay, no, go ahead. Keep going. Miami at Philly, Chicago at New Orleans. Bye week at the football team who gave them a run in the playoffs. The Giants at Indy, at Atlanta, Buffalo, Saints, Carolina, the Jets, and the Panthers again. Um, I'm going to be a wreck on October 3rd when Tom Brady steps into Gillette Stadium to take on the New England Patriots. Yeah, that is going to be the game of the fucking season. I don't care what anybody says. I'm and gonna... I said it last week, if the Patriots win, they are my pick to go to the Super Bowl in the AFC. Yeah, I, I don't see... I don't see them winning... But, hey, I got to have high hopes for a mediocre team. Wow, really? <laughs> I told you before. I'm honest about my team. You know this. Thank you. Well, I, told, I already told you how I feel about the Patriots. I think the Patriots can make it back in the playoffs. I said 10-7. and 7. I got them booked for 10-7. and 7. Yeah. I think they can make it. I, 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 the Patriots are good enough to make it. It's just how far they're going to go. That the, so, a, the AFC is so wide fucking open right now, as yeah. uh, as opposed to the NFC, where it's really only the three teams, three or four yeah, teams. Yeah, Buffalo and Kansas City and Tennessee are going to run the upshot this season. We all know that. Yeah, because don't don't let don't don't let the uh, don't let them fool you. Okay, don't let the don't let teams like the Buffalo Bills fool you that they that people are putting their money on. They're still young, and mm-hmm. they're still prone to make mistakes. You don't think that Bill Belichick ain't learned from them? And I would have hoped that Bill Belichick at this point has learned how to deal with the Dolphins late in the season. I would hope. Hopefully. That Hopefully. So, as you look at the schedule, what are you seeing? Uh, they're going to beat Dallas. They're going to beat Falcons. They're going to beat the Rams. Um, Yeah, if everybody's like Stafford's Rams, yes, they'll beat Stafford's Rams. They'll beat Tampa. They'll beat the Dolphins. They'll beat, they'll beat the Tampa. Eagles. How's Tampa going to beat Tampa? I mean, I mean Miami. They'll beat Miami. They'll beat the Eagles. Oddly enough, the one game I question is the Bears game, especially if Justin Fields is playing. Um, because it's the, it's the devil they don't know. 
And, it's their, and they lost a very bad game to the Bears last year. Yeah. So then we have um, the Saints. I think they could beat the Saints in a bye week. I really, so that's that's seven and one right there. See, people people tripped last year because the Saints beat this Buccaneers team twice. How are you going to happen this year? Yeah. Actually, excuse me. That's eight and one. Um, they'll beat Washington. They'll beat. You're the right. Giants. The first time it was seven and one. No. I was, yeah. Was eight games. Oh, yeah. Seven and one. So they'll beat Washington. They'll beat the Giants. They'll beat the Colts. They'll beat the Falcons again. The Bills game is going to be tough. Going to be fun though. Yeah, I think they. I think they'll lose that one. Um, close though. It'll be a close one. Uh, they'll beat the Saints again. Is that Panthers again? Or is that mm-hmm. a... Yes, Panthers. Carolina. And then the Jets? It's Carolina, and... Jets, Carolina. <sighs> We're looking at 15-2, and two, bro. You think they're going to push it like that? Yeah. I know everybody's like, oh, they went at what? They went 11-5, and five, right, last year? Mm-hmm. But that was the first time as this team is together. They about they about to pull fucking Golden State Warrior numbers now that they've had a season of jail together as a squad, and they're all this is right now probably the most experienced squad as a whole in the NFL. Yeah, because the same team from last year. Yeah, the same Super Bowl winning team from last year, dominantly Super Bowl winning team from last year. It's fifteen and two. I'm gonna go fourteen and three because I think there's just gonna be an upset somewhere, and hopefully it's week four. Um, uh, of course, of course, you got to go fourteen and three, sir. You can't, you can't. Yeah, I'm going fourteen and three on this one. Okay, okay. And you said fifteen and two. Yep, fifteen and two. All right, so I'm going to give you the floor to go ahead and talk about the um, start off our conversation about the New Orleans Saints. So the New Orleans Saints, the team that it was basically the end of an era last year when. Uh, Drew Brees decided to ride off into the sunset, which we knew was coming. It's not like we didn't know it was coming, right? We all, everybody saw the writing on the wall, even though he didn't want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. We all knew that it was there. Um, but within that, left us possibilities of how this was going to go down. Jameis Winston is still on the team. Uh, Taysom Hill is still on the team. And Jameis is still very um, immature. Well, nobody's ever questioned him on his maturity. I think if you're, if you're any kind of sports fan looking for Jameis Winston to be mature, then uh, I have a bridge in Brooklyn that I can tell you. Uh, just saying. Oh, nice. It's a nice bridge, bro. <laughs> it's a nice bridge. But that's what I'm saying. So like everybody has these, had these high expectations for. The uh, New Orleans Saints last year, they just couldn't do it. it but they were twelve and four. They won the division. Yeah, but they had problems. They, they they got suckered against Tampa Bay. They got they got gaslit by Tampa Bay, taking the two games and dominating the two games in the season. And then mm-hmm. when the actual fucking game comes to play, just <laughs> Molly Watts, son. Um, and. The, the Saints now have a new era. I'm not sure if it's a rebuilding or retooling. I'm not even sure how this is going to go. There's no way that Jameis Winston can uh, create the same kind of production that Drew Brees did. There's no way that Taysom Hill is going to be able to do that either. Well, Taysom Hill couldn't even throw a fucking 300-yard game. And that's what I'm saying. So, explain to me. How are the Saints going to be able to be good this year? I don't think that they can. Expectations got to be real low. I think they're going to be competitive, just a run of the mill team, but they will be competitive. They'll be the most exp- one of the most experienced coach teams um, in the division. I'll tell you that right now um, because uh, Sean Payton's been in that division for what 15, 16 years, somewhere around. Yeah, he's 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 getting up there with the exception. The exception of the suspended year, so. Yeah, so, or even, no, so I would say even longer than that. He's been there for a while. So, when you look at it like that, and you look at it from the grand perspective, uh, don't be surprised if your favorite uh, New Orleans player 
actually ends up um, either cut, leaving the team at the end of the year, <coughs> injured because they're trying too hard. It's, this is going to be an ugly season for the New Orleans Saints, bro. That's all I can really say. That's so on some, not- on some notable signings they made this offseason, we have um, coming back from his lacrosse league, Chris Hogan signed a one-year deal. Chris Hogan. They got Devontae Freeman. Mm-hmm. Prince Amukamara. Prince Amukamara. Um, but as far as named free agents, that's all they really went and picked up. Um, Michael Thomas is not happy there, and he's hurt. Mm-hmm. <sighs> They've also picked up Jared Cook. Mm-hmm. Um, Emmanuel, no, Emmanuel Sanders went to Emmanuel Sanders went to the Bills. Yeah, some. Oh, Jared Cook went to the Chargers. My bad. Yeah. Um. Yeah, they lost a lot too. I'm telling you. I'm Let's telling see you. extensions. They kept J.T. Gray, Noah Spence, Ty Montgomery, Dwayne Washington, Taysom Hill. How Taysom Hill got a one year, twelve point one point five nine million dollar contract? I do not know. I want to sign for that much money. Right. I can do and just run the ball three times a game. Yep, that's right. Okay, so their draft. Peyton Turner, defensive end out of Houston. Pete Warner, linebacker out of Ohio State. Paul Sidibe from Stanford. Ian Book from Notre Dame, a quarterback. Landon Young from Kentucky, and Kwan Baker, wide receiver out of Southern Alabama. Southern Alabama A and M University Academy. Oh, it's a bunch of names. I didn't even have any idea. What yeah, they, it this uh, this is going. This team might be hard to watch this year. They might be back to the bag here in a couple years here. Well, they just uh, oddly enough, they're a decent team if they can get Michael Thomas on board and find a quarterback. Is Jamin Winston, Jameis Winston that dude? I don't know. I don't think so. So their the quarterback room is Ian Book, Taysom Hill, Trevor Simeon, and Jameis Winston. In my mind, I think Simeon's going to start three games this season because of injuries and everything else. Well, the smart money. The smart mm-hmm. money is on Jameis Winston. He's probably going to be the only person that's going to be able to get you um, pat over 500 this year. I'm just saying. People think that's funny. But that's it. I think with the experience-wise, I think if you throw it, Taysom Hill can – Sean – all right, so here's the thing. Um, Greg Roman knows how to use a mobile quarterback, right? He's probably the only offensive coordinator – that knows how to use a mobile quarterback. Unfortunately, he's the offensive coordinator uh, for the for the freaking um, Ravens. Wait, wait. Uh, it's it's looking mad ugly uh, in New Orleans that they try and rotate some hill for sixteen games. Like at so, it's not gonna happen. So okay, let's look at some of the bright spots on their roster. Their running back room: they got Devontae Freeman, Alvin Kamara, and Latavius Murray. Bright mm-hmm. spots across the board right there. Mm-hmm. And Sutton Smith and Alexander Armada are good fullbacks. Yeah. Yeah. Wide receivers, they're bright spots. You got um Deontay Harris. Chris Chris Hogan can play. Look at his work he did in New England. Look at the work he did in New England. Yeah. Um Michael Thomas is on the PUP list, so he's probably gonna miss the first four weeks of the season. Um Jalen McCleskey is also on injury reserve. But other than that, the receivers are Kavon Baker, Marquez Callaway, Lil Jordan Humphrey. He literally has the word Lil as his first name. Lil Jordan? Oh, yeah, Lil Jordan Humphrey. Lil Jordan Humphrey. Jake Lampman, Tommy Lee Lewis, Ty Montgomery, Traquan Smith. Wow. At tight end, the tight end room, this game, this team, just looking at the fucking roster, looks gutted on offense. Gary Griffin, Juwan Johnson, Josh Peterman, Adam Troutman, Nick Vanette, and Ethan Wolf. That's their tight ends. Yeah. God damn, how much did they fucking lose this offseason? A lot. Defense, you still got Cameron Jordan hanging around. Mm-hmm. You got Marcus Davenport. Mm-hmm. Um... Mm-hmm. You got Quan Alexander, who's a who's a new a new face for. Yeah, he just new came Orleans. over a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago. Yeah. 
but he is a solid player. Yeah. Um, God damn, man. This team is like unrecognizable from last year. That's what I'm saying. Malcolm Jenkins at Malcolm Jenkins at strong safety. Mm-hmm. Marshawn Lattimore is still a corner. He's, he's a pro bowler. Mm-hmm. God damn, they don't got shit. No, nah, you know why? They, they should got they should got Blake Griffin cooking. Oh no, that's Blake Gillikin kicking punts. You, you you obviously see why I said that they're gonna drop two straight against New Orleans. I mean, yeah, no, I mean they're gonna drop two straight against Tampa. There's a reason why I said it. The 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 who that the who that uh nation is it's a wrap. I know y'all don't like to hear that who that nation. <laughs> but listen, Jameis Winston's is gonna be the only way you get over five hundred, and that's not gonna be good enough to get over the playoffs. I'm talking about like nine and eight, maybe. Because because Taysom Hill might win you a couple games with his legs, but people are gonna get get Quick to that real fast. Taysom Hill as an accessory is going to win them a couple games. What's going to happen when the Falcons, who had decent success uh, boxing in Taysom Hill, they built their defense around um, Taysom, Taysom Hill. You know what I'm saying? And now you ain't mm-hmm. got that. They ain't got that at all, bro. So. Go ahead and do that schedule up real quick. Yeah, yeah, man. I got your schedule. I got your schedule. So, they opened the season at home against the drama quarterbacks controversy of the year, the Green Bay Packers. Mr. Aaron, it's all about me, Rodgers. Um, it's all about me. Then they got Carolina, New England, at Carolina at New England, then the Giants and at Washington. By week, then they got Seattle, Tampa, Atlanta, at Tennessee, at Philadelphia, Buffalo, Dallas, at the Jets, at the Bucks again, Miami, Carolina, and they finish off the season at Atlanta. This is not a nice schedule for this team. No, and then when you look at it, uh, geez. Bucks, they'll take an L against the, the, I mean, the Packers, they'll take an L. Um, which are, is darker ones home? Is that what it is? It says at, oh wait, I'm, I don't know what you're looking at. So they're, the home ones are week one, week okay. four, eight, nine. Okay, the dark twelve. Ones. Yeah, so so they'll be. I think they'll they'll lose to Green Bay. Um, they'll lose to. So we're talking about one and three. I mean, yeah, one and three in the first four. Maybe still one against Washington. One and five. Uh, they won't beat the Seahawks. They ain't gonna beat Tampa Bay. Um, they'll beat the Falcons uh, on the on the on the at home. Yeah, they ain't beating Tennessee. They'll beat Philadelphia. They'll lose in the Buffalo, losing to Dallas. Actually, no. Well, I think they'll beat Dallas at home. No. They'll lose to Dallas. They'll lose to Dallas. They'll beat the Jets. Lose to the Bucks. Maybe beat Miami. Um, let's see, I'm looking. I'm looking at a seven and ten record here. They'll beat the Panthers, and then lose to the Falcons. What did I have me at? One and three. No, two and three. Actually, no. I think they'll lose to Washington because of that defense. So it'll be one and four, one and five, one and six, two and six, two and seven, three and seven, four and eight, five and eight, five and nine, five and ten. Um. Six and eleven. All right, and I got them at and I got them at seven and ten. Yeah, six and eleven. All right. All right, so that is it for the NFC Southern boys. Now it's time to go over to the AFC South, and we are starting with none other than the Jacksonville Jaguars. First, we want to apologize for having to even talk about this team. Um, 
<laughs> oh, what? You thought I was going to say something nice? Oh. With a new head coach, he's never coached in the NFL before. Urban Meyer. Urban. Who quit his college job because he had a headache. Um, That's right. That's fucked up. <laughs> it was severe, okay? I'm sorry. I've never quit a job because I had a migraine. Listen. It's just that your migraines weren't bad enough. Your migraines weren't scandal, okay? That's what it is. You didn't have one of those scandal migraines, okay? One of those migraines that oh. I, I have to do what's best for me and my family type of migraines, okay? I got you. Okay, so the big talk coming into the season for the Jacksonville Jaguars is their obvious tanking and fighting for tanking to get Trevor Lawrence. And not only that, they drafted two players in the first round, both from Clemson. They also drafted Trevor Lawrence's running back, Tra- Travis Etnan. But they also signed Tim Tebow at tight end and then cut him because he made two quarterback blocks. <laughs> you, you hired a quarterback to be a tight end and you expected him to make blocks. Just because he has big muscles don't mean he can block anybody. Don't mean he doesn't still have the fear of a quarterback in his fucking brain. But oddly enough, he actually was a really, really decent receiver in the in this yeah. uh, in the offseason, in the preseason. I actually appreciated him a lot. Um, it's sad that it's no no more Tebow time, but it's time to let the real football players in, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for the big boys to uh, to come through. And Tim Tebow is either going to end up in New England or San Francisco by the end of the season. Wow. Uh, um, so going over their draft real quick: Trevor Lawrence, Travis Etienne, both from Clemson. Then they drafted Tyson Campbell, Walker Little, Andre Sisko. That's song, that's song, that's song. <laughs> Jay Tufeli, Jordan Smith, Luke Farrell, and Jalen Camp. Jalen Camp, huh? Well, what do you know? Um, you yes, and they got that draft pick for trading Jalen Ramsey to the Rams. Uh, Smart, you know what I'm saying? Smart. Got think, but- they got the same first name. They might play a lot like each other. No, they won't. <laughs> No. Jalen Ramsey is ranked 99 on Madden 22, so exactly. it ain't going to happen. Exactly. Um, um, Jacksonville, I would say there's a lot to go about Jacksonville, but they're starting from nothing, so I guess everything is something special, right? All right, so let's look at their coaching, okay? So you got the head coach as Urban Meyer. Mm-hmm. Your assistant head coach is Charlie Strong. Yeah, I know who Charlie Strong is. Um, offensive coordinator, you got Daryl Bevel. Mm-hmm. And defensive coordinator, you got Joe Cullen. Mm-hmm. Brian Schottenheimer is your passing game coordinator, quarterbacks coach, mm-hmm. which is a good a good guy to have over there. Um, so that's all their named coaches. So let's look at this roster here. Quarterbacks, you got C.J. Beathard, mm-hmm. Trevor Lawrence, Jake Luton, and Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew is the enigma that will not go away and leave Jacksonville alone. Well. All they need to do at this point is, yeah, all they basically all they need to do at this point. I don't know. I have a hard. T- let me tell you. So let, let me let me be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with the people out there. I I hate. I I absolutely despise the Jag- Jacksonville Jaguars as an organization. And like so, every time that we have to talk about this team, it's oh, it's rough. That's why I let Big Sin do the heavy lifting when it comes to the Jaguars. I absolutely despise them. I despise them ever since um, they they did what they did to Byron Leftwich. I despise them whenever they did later on to David Gerard. I despise them when they they, they have the worst ownership group in the NFL. Yeah, I, I despise them with what they did with Blake Bortles, knowing how limited Blake Bortles was. I despise them when they got rid of their entire receiving core two years ago. I despise them for when Gardner, when they got rid of their entire defense two years ago. Yes, I just I really hate this team. And so I, what I'm so to make to make it easier on Hollywood and make this segment actually mean something, <laughs> let's go ahead and talk about the rest of the team. They're running backs. They got Nathan Cottrell, Travis Etienne, one of Hollywood's favorites here, Carlos Hyde. Yes. Dare Angumbawale, Devin Ozabigo, and James Robinson. Carlos Hyde is probably the best running back if he can stay healthy of all those names. Yes. 
He's eight. eight, eight we call him. We call him the uh, two times four. You know what two times four? Two times four is eight, which is exactly how many games he'll actually play this year. In the wide receiver crew, we got um, <laughs> Jamal Agnew. Tavon Austin is still in the league. Mm-hmm. Um, Jalen Camp. DJ Chark, who is a bright spot. DJ Chark, do, 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 do. DJ Chark, do, 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 do. DJ Jeff Chark. Cotton, Jeff Cotton. Philip Dorsett, who had a big couple seasons in New England. Yeah. Farrell Cooper, Josh Hammond, Colin Johnson. Marvin Jones was a big pickup this offseason. Yeah. Kevin Jones. They just signed him because his last name was Jones, and they thought he was Marvin's brother. <laughs> um, LaVisca Chenault and Laquan Treadwell. So the wide receiver core has three decent receivers. Yeah. Tight end core, they got Tyler Davis, Ben Elfleson, Luke Farrell, Chris Manhurts, and James O'Shaughnessy. If it wasn't for James O'Shaughnessy, the tight end court would be as bad as the Saints. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of just where – yeah. I'm sorry. (laughs) I know. He just hates the Jaguars this much. Um. No, no, I don't hate them. I despise them, okay? Get the term right. I fucking despise them. And I hope that, once again, if it wasn't for Trevor Lawrence, who's actually a decent human being, I'd ask for them to go 0-16. Just to save us all the trouble. So, on defense, they have Josh Allen. No, not Michael Vick. No. They have Malcolm Brown, who is a stud in New England, but then fell off when he asked to get traded. Mm-hmm. Um... Danny Ukule. Um that, 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 that's really it on the defensive line. Let's look at the linebacker core. Miles Jack is always a standout performer. Shaquille Quarterman is decent. Um, Damian Winslow does his job. Defensive backs, um, Chris Claybrooks, Shaquille Griffin. Um <laughs> And Andrew Wingard are probably the best names I see on here. Yeah, it's C.J. Henderson. Um, unless I'm thinking about the old running back, C.J. Henderson, which I might be. Well. Who played for Jacksonville also, so it's a little weird. This uh, is, I mean, outside a few studs that you mentioned, this is, this is horrible. Like, I'm trying to be nice here, okay? I will honestly be surprised if Urban Meyer makes it through the season. Is he gonna pull a? Uh, what, what, he's, gonna, he's gonna pull a fucking um, homeboy who coaches Chicago, uh, um, Alabama. Uh, Nick Saban. Oh yeah, I'm gonna resign here. Yeah, I'm gonna resign here. Yeah, I'm signing a multi-million dollar in Alabama. I, I thought you were gonna say that he was gonna pull one of those. Who who uh, uh, was it? Not Patino. Um, the court, the old coach of Louisville, Trevino or something like that. No, Patino, Victor Patino. No, no, not not that. Not he was the basketball coach, the 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 Louisville football coach. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, the one that he used, he coached the Falcons, and he left like uh, what with five games left into the season. Still had a longer tenure with the team than the last two UNLV coaches. Uh, <laughs> so let's go ahead and pull up this um, Jacksonville Jaguars schedule, so Hollywood can shit on it. Okay. 0-16. Um. Uh, 17. Um, <laughs> oh, so they start, they start off at Houston. We don't know if Deshaun Watson is playing yet. Then they're home against Denver, home against Arizona. Then they're at Cincy, home against Tennessee, home against Miami, at Seattle. Then Buffalo, at Indy, San Francisco, Atlanta, at LA, the Rams, at the Titans, home against Houston, at the Jets, at the Patriots, and home against the Colts. Yikes. Um, <laughs> so, um, this is not a favorable schedule. I see a two of 15 record here. So I feel that without Deshaun Watson, they'll beat the Texans. The Texans, I do have no favors. The, to the yeah, like I said, I'm going two of 15 here. They win two games. Let's see. And if Trevor Lawrence is healthy, they might win four. Yeah, they'll, they'll beat the Texans with Trevor Lawrence. Um... Joe Burrow's going to be back. They're not going to beat the Bengals. Um, Tennessee is a stud team. Three and 14. Damn. You talked shit about him, and I gave him a worse record than you did. Yeah. I, don't know. I mean, I figured 
they'll win one against each their their divisional rivals. Not well. Let me rephrase that. They'll beat the Colts once, and then they'll beat ten. They'll beat the Texans twice. They're not beating Tennessee. All right. So speaking of the Texans, throw up that logo for our next section. Okay. 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 What? So the Houston Texans is a team that is marred in controversy right now because we don't know what's true. Thank you. We don't know what's true or not when it comes to the whole Deshaun Watson deal. Um, when he was asking to be traded, all this slander came out against him. Then when people stopped asking about what they wanted, it all went away. And, uh, yeah, pretty much. So um, we have here – so they have made some interesting roster choices the last couple of years and trading DeAndre Hopkins for a bag of chips. And then this past season, letting J.J. Watt leave without even putting up a fight. Mm-hmm. Um, and I still think that's off of the Bill O'Brien nonsense that they had there. So, um, let's see. <laughs> there's only one question. Did they at least draft a running back? Hold on. I will do you one better here, sir. Are you ready for the signings of the Texans this offseason? Sure. Tyrod Taylor. (laughs) Philip Philip Lindsay, Mark Ingram, and Rex Burkhead. Oh, wow. Then at wide receiver, they signed Andre Roberts, Chris Moore, Alex Erickson, Dante Moncrief, and Chris Conley. That's actually not a bad roster. Then they offensive line. They signed. They basically let go of their whole team. Uh, <laughs> they signed Justin McCray, Lane Taylor, Cole Toner, Justin Britt, off of the offensive line. Justin Britt coming off of the season where he did not play last year. Yeah. Um, on the defensive side of things, they signed Malik Collins, Vincent Taylor, Kevin Pierre Louis, Jordan Jenkins, Christian Kirksey. Kamu Gruger Hill, Joe Thomas, not the one that we like, Derek Rivers, Tay Davis, Hardy Nickerson Jr., Terrence Mitchell, Tavier Thomas, Desmond King, Trey Monsmith, Terrence Brooks, and Cameron Johnston. They replaced damn near their whole fucking team this offseason. Yikes. Yikes. Okay. Well then. Um, <laughs> so it's not a bad little squad. I mean, it's a nice little B squad. No, they're, they're running back. They're running back core is solid. Well, it just got upgraded with Ingram and fucking uh, Lindsey. And you got Burkhead there, too. And Burkhead. If Deshaun Watson was playing, this would be pretty fucking solid. So the coaching staff, head coach is David Cully. Assistant defensive coordinator is Lovey Smith. Mm-hmm. Um, Tim, Tim Kelly is the offensive coordinator. Bobby King is a defensive coordinator. They fucked Romeo Cornell, and I'm still upset about it. Yeah, because he, he, I mean, all intents and purposes, there was not much Romeo Cornell could do with that squad of misfits and fiends and scoundrels uh, last year. Because uh, yeah, he followed up Bill O'Brien, who was possibly the worst head coach in NFL history. Of all the times. Yes, of all the times. All the times. So the quarterback room looks like this right now. Deshaun Watson, Tyrod Taylor, Davis Mills, and Jeff Driscoll. Um, word on the street is that Driscoll might be the starter of week one. Is, is Tyrod's lung inflated yet again? No, but apparently the coaches like Jeff Driscoll that much that they're willing to that start if Desha- him. That if Deshaun one. can't go, it's going to be Driscoll? That's what the word is. Um, mm-hmm. And that's what the word is. The word is, is that the NFL is speeding up. This process because they drug their feet the entire summer. Yeah. Um, regarding this process, and they've already interviewed ten uh, women in this thing out of the twenty something that have accused them. Mm-hmm. So we should find out what's going down by week one. It's only going to take right. us. I don't think that the NFL would would go into the season with Deshaun Watson if they do play have him play four games without a decision. That's I got you. Um, you want know to you, you want to know what's a little concerning here? What? Listen to these names. Marcus Cannon, Titus Howard, Roderick Johnson, and Laramie Tunzel. Three off, four offensive linemen, okay? Oh. Three of which are out with COVID. Ooh. And Marcus Cannon is active, but he's physically unable to play list. Oh. 
I know Laramie Tunzel. That he's that dude. He's that dude. Yes, that in memory, Cannon was great in New England the last three years. Yeah, Laramie Tunzel help. Laramie Tunzel help uh, protect uh, your mm-hmm. boy uh, Deshaun Watson. Very so good. we're looking at their running back core. We already talked about Rex. They got Buddy Howe. The ad with the three I already talked about: Buddy Howe, Darius Jackson, David Johnson, and Scotty Phillips. Um, David Johnson was the can of Pringles after mentioned for the trade with DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, <laughs> so this is, I think, the weakest part of this team. And I know people are going to hear me say this and be like, "Oh, they got a couple of good players." Yeah, but they're good players who will always get hurt in big moments. We have their wide receiver core, Nico Collins, Chris Conley, Brandon Cooks, Kiki Kute, Alex Erickson, Anthony Miller, Chris Moore, Andre Roberts, Tayron Taylor, and Jordan Rice. Brandon Cooks and Alex Anderson and Anthony Miller are always hurt. Yeah. But always. They, but they got – there's a name that you mentioned. I think it was third from last. He's a – I believe that he's a – He's uh, Chris Moore. Chris Moore was on um, – I forgot what team what he was on last year. but He was on the Ravens. Ravens. Pretty high, pretty reliable. Um, this really team is going to come down to what happens with Deshaun Watson. Um, mm-hmm. If they're Deshaun Watson, they're a bubble playoff team. Uh, if they're not, it's going to be uh, – Jeff Driscoll going 0-17 probably at this point. I have no idea. It's Jeff Driscoll, I like him, but he doesn't have the talent necessary in order to get this team to do what he wants it to do. Um, so people watching us might wonder why I'm so big on tight ends and why I keep bringing them up. Because yeah. tight ends are very important to a football team. Yes. Um, their tight end room, the only one who has a, any, I think, Decent NFL experience is Ryan Izzo, and he was hurt most of the year for New England last year. Yeah. But other than that, they got Jordan Atkins, Anthony Arclair, Pharaoh Brown, Brevin Jordan, Paul Queensberry, and Kahale Waring. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm saying. Like, there's tight ends. This is still going to be a growing process in, in, in the Texans. At the end of the day, that's really all it is. You're going to see a lot of guys that step up and actually put up numbers. It might not translate into wins. Um, but the AFC South and the way that it's built, they'll be competitive. It's not that the Texans won't be competitive. Uh, they won't. They just won't win games. They just won't. No, the, o- the only team that is far and above, above everybody else in this division is the Tennessee Titans. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're very much very well coached. They're experienced. They've played together for the last two years. It's going to be fun. Let's see. Defensive-wise, we're looking at um, Ozie Afuhai. He, he's all right. Um, Jordan Jenkins, Roy Lopez, Derek Rivers on the line, Demarcus Walker. And linebacker, we have Hardy Nickerson Jr. That's a name I ain't heard in a while. Hardy Nickerson, huh? Yeah, he son? Got, yeah, you got a son that's an absolute beast, yo. Um, Shaq Lawson, who's a beast. Mm-hmm. Um, at defensive back, we have. Do they have anything good? Terrence Brooks has been a solid safety for a long time. AJ Moore, John Reed, Justin Reed. Bra- um, Bradley Roby is an interesting case because he's one of those Denver Bronco troublemakers from when Denver had a good defense. Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting on what. Bradley Roby is now because I think he was suspended all last season. If I can't, if I remember correctly, yeah, I, I believe that is exactly right. Um, yeah, they got they had a few COVID holdouts that you're going to see come back through. So, yeah, should be. Fun. And if anybody know, wants to remember that name, Roby, he's the guy on the Rams who tackled the wide receiver on the Saints and it wasn't called. Yep, yep, yep. that's who that is. Yep. So you can hate him now while we're talking. Um, you can hate him now. Hey, he won't stop now. So. <laughs> Go ahead and throw up their um, mediocre schedule. I'm already ahead of you, sir. All right. So we start off at home against the Jaguars and at Cleveland, home in the Panthers, at Buffalo, home against New England, at Indy, at Arizona, home against the Rams, at Miami, at Tennessee, home against the Jets, Colts, and Seahawks, at Jacksonville, home against the Chargers, at San Francisco, and home against the Titans. 
So, oh, shit. This, this schedule is going to be one of these asterisk schedules because if Deshaun Watson is playing, they will have a winning record this year. Mm-hmm. If he's not, they are going to have a bad losing record. It's a team that I can guarantee that the Colts will come through. If Deshaun's not Watson not playing, the, the Colts are going to come through and sweep. They're a team that can, they can go really bad really fast without Deshaun Watson and be – Decent with him, um, but we gotta operate under the fact. I'm gonna operate under the fact that Deshaun Watson is not gonna play. Okay, I'll operate the same. Okay. Well, how about we do this? How about we op- we give him two records? Okay. In case the NFL's like, All right, we don't really have proof that Deshaun did anything, so he can play. Yeah. So we're gonna give you guys two sets of records here. All right. So. The deciding factor with Deshaun Watson, I believe that if he plays, it's ten and seven. They're a ten and seven team with Deshaun Watson. They can... I'll, I'll, I'll go eleven and six. Okay, without Deshaun Watson, they're probably a three and fourteen team. I'll tell it like it is: three and fourteen. And that... so they they have a tough schedule here. Oh, that's what I'm saying. And without an experienced quarterback, they got a tough schedule since some, against some really tough defenses. Look at this. Week four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. You have Buffalo, New England, Indy, Arizona, the Rams, and the Dolphins. Mm-hmm. Then you have your bye week and you come back with the Titans. Mm-hmm. That is seven weeks of just madness. Fuck, 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 shit, fuck. Um, yeah, I, yeah, three and four team. I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with you on that one. It's a wrap on that one, boy. <laughs> it's all bad. <laughs> Woo shit. Who shit. Okay. All right. Next up on the beautiful bean footage, we got those Indianapolis Colts, who had the best shit talker in the NFL, leave them this year after only one season. Mr. Philip Rivers, who used to call defensive linemen fatties. Yeah. Well, Philip Rivers was the big shining bright spot on this team. Well, what's interesting here, after Carson Wentz got hurt, and he might be out 5 to 12 weeks, Mm -hmm. Phillip Rivers announced on Instagram and Twitter that he is willing to come back for a season. Yeah, 5 to 12 weeks is a very wide range of... uh... (laughs) Yeah, okay, so 5 to 12 weeks, it might not seem a lot in, like, real life, but NFL life, that is between a number one draft pick and... Possibly a playoff spot. Yeah, it's a that means that the foot is a list Frank injury, and that he might not even be back in twelve weeks. And then the offensive lineman, an off one of their best offensive linemen, suffered the same exact injury two days later. Yeah. You got. I think at this point you got to make the call to Philip Rivers. Philip Rivers got into the playoffs last year. Philip Rivers could have got them to the Super Bowl if it wasn't for a couple drops. Yeah, yeah. Philip Rivers got them to where they needed to be. Um, and nobody thought Philip Rivers was going to be able to do it. I thought he did. Remember, yeah, I said, we we had them at a decent record last year. Yeah, I said that Philip Rivers actually mm-hmm. he still has some left in the tank. I said I, he's probably going to the playoffs. I think they were going to win a Super Bowl with Philip Rivers, but well, I we do got some left in the tank. He's got twelve kids. Yeah, <laughs> his poor wife during the offseason, man. Oh man, <laughs> bitch, you ain't leaving the bedroom. Get here, get over here. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking so, six months of hell. <laughs> Six months of hell. Oh, my God. That's how Phil Rivers stayed in shape, baby. He like, beat the pussy up. Beat the pussy up. Hey, beat the pussy up. Beat the pussy up. He like, oh. he comes in the tree, comes in the tree. Man, I got stamina for days, baby. For days. Phil Rivers is the angriest white guy in the world who will not cuss. Yeah, not at and all. And it's funny. And I love it. I love him for it. So so we're going to have a or we're gonna have a guest walk through because he needs to brush his teeth to go to bed. Um, okay. He's going to brush his teeth. But while we're doing that, yeah. All right, so their draft, they drafted, how the fuck? Quitty Pay. K-W-I-T-Y. Quitty Pay. No, his last name is Pay. His first name is K-W-I-T-Y. Quitty Pay? Quitty Pay. Quitty Pie? Is it that was their first pick. That was their first pick. Their second pick was Dayo Ode Ingbo. The, the, Dayo Ode what? Ode Igbo. Ode Igbo? 
Then their third pick was Kylan Granson. Granson? Granson? So the first three rounds, they were just like, let's make Roger Goodell say these fucked up names. Hold up. <laughs> they just they just picked niggas with the most fucked up shit. Okay. Because then, then it was Sean Davis and Sean Sam... Davis. Sam Ellinger, Michael Schrockman, and Will Fresh. Oh, I forgot they drafted <laughs> Sam Ellinger from uh, Texas, right? Texas. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. I remember. Yeah. Should be fun. Um, so, um, Frank Reich has a lot of work to do this year. Um, this is probably going to be his greatest coaching feat yet. I mean. Because he doesn't have – because let's be honest here. Carson Wentz is not a great quarterback. But. He's serviceable, but he's not. But Frank Wright got the most out of Carson Wentz. And Terry got hurt, and then Nick Foles won the Super Bowl. Uh, well, you know, I mean, he got hurt. What do you want me to do? He's made of glass. But he, he's always hurt. He's made of glass. He is Samuel Jackson in the Unbreakable Trilogy. He is the glass man. They should have brought back Jacoby Brissett, okay? That's what they should have done. Um, also, their offensive coordinator, Marcus Brady, has a lot of work to do this year. Mm-hmm. And the defensive coordinator, Matt Everfluss, who had this defense humming last year. Mm-hmm. So let's take a look at their roster here. In their quarterback room, they got Jacob Eason, Sam Ellinger, Brett Hundley, and Carson Wentz. Yeah. Brett Hundley, they got their former Green Bay Packer washout. Yeah, the, the one that he played like three series and almost died. The one Aaron Rodgers got mad at first for them drafting. Yep. <laughs> Pretty much. Person. Running back core, running back core has Nyheim Hines, Dr. Jackson, Benny Lemay, Martin Mack, Jonathan Taylor, Jordan Wilkins. We know Jonathan Taylor is the man here. Yeah, it's, that dude was a monster last year. Yeah, he he. It took him a minute to catch on, but once he did, yep. it was off the races, bro. Off to the races. Because when when Martin Mack went down, Jonathan Taylor went in there and just put the whole team on his back. Yep. Well, I remember I said it though. I said he was mm-hmm. the, he was the number one running back in the nation two years ago. I yep. said, it's going to go down. I said, believe it. Better and he was slept on during the draft, so. Yep. Now, the wide receiver core, Tariq Black, Paris Campbell, Ashton Dullin, the Michael Harris, future Indianapolis Colts Hall of Famer, T.Y. Hilton, Zach Pascal, Desmond Poutman, Michael Pittman Jr., Michael Sarachin, and Tyler Vaughn. Oh, yeah. That's a, I mean, that's Michael crazy. Pittman Jr., that's, a, that's an interesting one. Well, T.Y. Hilton, you know, is the king of the world. Mm-hmm. Remember, nobody believed in T.Y. Hilton, right? He was just a name. Like, he started out as a fourth stringer, and then he ended up as a third stringer. Then he ended up as a second stringer. Then he ended up as Marvin Harrison. Yep, pretty much. Most reliable receiver. He's been through so many quarterbacks and still has remained consistent all these years. And Zach Pascal, he's not a big name, but he is good. Yeah, yeah. Tight ends, like I say, they got Jack Doyle. Who has been solid his entire career? Yeah. Jordan Thomas, Andrew Volet, Noah Toglio, Ferrod Green, Kylan Granson, and Graham Akakombs, and Mo Ali Cox. Mm-hmm. Mo Ali Cox. Yeah, my man Mo Ali Cox, baby. Oh, did you see the 49ers sign? Ha ha Clinton Dix? Yes, yes, I saw that. <laughs> That's actually a good signing for you guys. Yeah, it's not bad. We'll, we'll see how um, it goes. The O line was solid last year. It's going to be it's the same O line from last year. Ryan Kelly's very good. Um, Mark Lewinsky, what, pro bowler? They got some good players there. Um, defense, the defense was the talk of the town last year. Yeah. Well, remember, this was a team that was really good on both sides of the ball. All they needed was a quarterback. Hmm? And Phillip Rivers limited the turnovers and did what he needed to do and got them to the playoffs. They just couldn't, again, they came this close to making that upset to go into the second round. But Buffalo just plays really fucking fast. Yeah, they play 60 minutes of football. <laughs> 60 minutes of football. Um, unlike the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, so, but that's, yeah. A little oh, yeah, hold on. Hachin. Um, I'm sorry to three squad, baby. Um, <clears throat> yeah. But, yeah, I mean, that's why they got, that's why they got Wentz, because they figured at the very least he could carry him for another few, for a few years until, until they could assess it. Yeah. I, th- I think Wentz with this Colts team, the way that they're coached, they're well coached. Well, yeah, not well, only that, their offensive line is light years ahead of what the Eagles' offensive line was when Wentz was there. Oh, shit. That's, that's a, that, that that's offensive a line in Philadelphia was not good that, at all. That was an absolute fucking understatement, bro, what you just said. 
So I mean, they would only they only wanted to block for Nick Foles. Yeah, I mean, in which and, and that's true because they didn't even block for Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts was running nope. for his life. Yeah. Um. So D- Darius Leonard, um, EJ Speed, Zaire Franklin, Julian Blackman, TJ Carey. These are all all these guys on defense are going to be name names that people know. Xavier Rhodes. These are really good. This is a really good defensive team. Yeah, very, very. Which very. is interesting because four years ago they were one of the worst in well, the NFL. Well, yeah, and now, I mean, once they stepped up the offensive line, everything just kind of fell into place, and that's where we are. Where we are. So, I pulled up the schedule. All right. Um, it's kind of blurred out. So, but I could see logos. I, I got you. I see that they got to play the Ravens in Week One. Nope, they don't play the Ravens in Week One. Oh, Seahawks. I mean, I'm sorry. See, all right, so bad. we got we got home at the Seahawks, home with the Rams, at Tennessee, at Miami, at Baltimore, home in Houston, at San Francisco, home in Tennessee, home against the Jets, home against Jacksonville, at Buffalo, home against Tampa, at Houston, home against New England, at Arizona, home against the Raiders, and at Jacksonville to finish the season. Yeah, and that already tells you that how this is a rough schedule without having to go without Carson Wentz from five to twelve. Um, yeah, those first, those first five weeks, and whether Deshaun Watson is playing week six, then you got the forty nine of the Tennessee. Those first eight weeks have the potential to be an zero and eight record. L- listen, if it was, if we could say a hundred percent for sure that Philip Rivers was coming out and coming to play. I actually could see them beating beating Seattle. I could actually see them beating the Rams. I would make them. I would be more willing if if he was on the team to make them six and two than zero and eight. Yeah, because I think that they don't. I think they lose to um, Tennessee, the, the Tennessee and the Niners. I think that would be those two in the first eight. Um, and then after that, it's it just kind of just goes from there. And they would have, they would struggle with Baltimore because Baltimore is just fast. Yeah, <clears throat> but I think even with Philip Rivers, because the way that that defense is built, and that offensive line is, yeah. I think they could beat Baltimore. Baltimore, regardless of what anybody says, Baltimore is not unbeatable. You just have the right have to have the right matchup. And defensively, the Colts have the right matchup. Oh no! Remember, New England exposed them last year. Yeah. So and that's what I said. If I could say for sure that Philip Rivers was playing and he's starting Week One. I could actually foresee and say, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. I'll say ten and seven. Easy. But but it's too. I think it's too late for them to bring Philip in now. I don't we're, know. we're two weeks away from the season starting. Yeah, but it's the same offense, offensive coordinator, same playbook, the whole nine. It, it's it's a matter of matchups at this point, right? So I still I still have a question for Jim Irsay. Yeah. Why the fuck didn't you protect Andrew Luck the way you protected Phil Rivers? Um, that's a good question. That's a good question. Because that offensive line for Andrew Luck got him killed. Well, remember, remember the whole, that's the whole reason why Ryan Grigson got fired. Because yeah. remember the coach said, give me offensive fucking lineman to protect nope. my fucking quarterback. No, I'm nope. good. Nope. No, I'm good. No. So, overall, I'm, I'm going to judge this season on having Wentz. And I think Wentz won't be back until around week nine, give or take. Because of the way the injury is, because his foot, if it's only five weeks, he's still going to have tender foot for a couple weeks. Yeah. So, so I think around week nine if is when Wentz will actually come back. If we're operating under the fact that who's their first string, who's who, who's their quarterbacks in the center? Tyrod? It's um, Driscoll, Tyrod Driscoll? E, no, um, Eason, Jacob Eason, Sam Ellinger, and Brett Hundley. Oh, Jake Eason. Big Jake Eason. So I'm going to, like I said, I'm operating this like Carson Wentz ain't going to be there from until week nine or twelve. All right, I'll, I'll do it. We'll we'll, we'll we'll split the baby. I'll say that, let's say Carson Wentz comes back at week eight. Okay, I mean week nine. I and the, the reason I say week nine is bringing him back against Tennessee is not going to be good. No, I'm um, bringing back against a soft Jets team. Let him get his feet under him, and then you got a soft Jacksonville team after that. You might be able to upset Buffalo. I doubt it, but you might be able to. But they're going to fuck around. Jake Eason is not a bad quarterback at all. No, he's not. He's um, not. You fuck around, though. Let me see. I will say by that time it's all said and done, 
Yeah, they'll be one. In, they'll be one and eight if they if it's if it's, if there's no Carson Wentz until week nine. But they have the potential. I would say the only question mark is going to be that Patriots game. Is Carson what about Wentz going to be good enough to win? that Tampa game? Bay game? Oh yeah, that's another one too. Jesus Christ! And they got the they got the um, Raiders, the Cardinals, also. Yeah, they they really need Carson Wentz back at least by week week six. Yeah, because their their bye week is week fourteen. Yeah, they need Carson Wentz back by week six. If not, <laughs> so what? So look at so looking like this, Hollywood. The only under five hundred teams they got on the schedule between week one and week thirteen uh-huh. are Houston, Jacksonville, the Jets, and the only reason this team was under five hundred was because of injuries with San Francisco. Well, they'll beat Jacksonville twice. Um, where I said they'll beat the Jets. And that's that's probably where it is. If I mean, maybe the Raiders, maybe. Um, so we'll say four and thirteen. I'll say four and thirteen without Carson. Without without uh, Carson wins four and thirteen for a majority of the season. Yes, yeah, four and thirteen. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get the Devils too. I'm gonna go five and eleven here, just because they they can upset somebody because the defense can make a play. I mean, five and twelve, my bad. Yeah, but if but if Carson wins, I mean, not Carson wins. If what you call him comes out and sit, and, and they have him out there, a couple preseasons plays week one, the Colts are a playoff team. I will tell you this right now: the Colts are a playoff team. If they See, okay, so team. we're going to do this with this caveat: if for whatever reason they decide to give Philip Rivers a call, say Carson Wentz might not be back this season, which is a possibility with this injury too. Yeah. Um, we will re- revisit this schedule. And make another, and just call it how it is. Yeah, we'll find out what's going to go down week one. That's going to be just a big ass asterisk because because the potential of Philip Rivers coming back blows this whole thing out the water right here. But right now, the, I say they're they're four, four and thirteen, or three and fourteen. I said three and fourteen. Three and fourteen. Um, you said, or four and thirteen. You said four and thirteen. I said five and twelve. Yeah, four and thirteen. Okay, all right. So so now we are moving on to the. Talk of the town, King Henry and his kingness of the Tennessee Titans getting some offensive firepower to help him run more openly. Mm-hmm. Um, this team is going to be scary this year. They were scary last year because um, Ryan Tannehill has that Brett Favre in him where he'll just throw the ball wherever the fuck he feels like it. The, the Hennessy Titans? Yes, the Hennessy Titans. Um they lost Malcolm Butler. They lost Adam Humphreys. They lost Christopher Milton. They lost Kenny Vaccaro. All Malcolm Butler is probably the biggest name of those four. Humphreys was the longest tenured player of those four. Um, so not really a lot in losing. Um, then the draft, they drafted Caleb Farley, a decent corner out of Virginia Tech. Dillian Radon, the backup offensive lineman, North Dakota State. Monty Rice, Elijah Molden, Des Fitzpatrick. Rashad Weaver, Racy McMass, and Brady Breeze, a safety out of Oregon. Oregon. So they well, they didn't lose a lot. I mean, they lost no. a lot, but they gained a lot more. Yes. They... So the, the the big thing this offseason, mm-hmm. the big thing is they basically got Julio Jones for not much at all. No, no. I mean, because they weren't going to get – so the thing is that we call Julio Jones one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, right? But last year was horrible, and he was healthy for mo- for most of the season. Yeah, and that's because of how bad the Falcons were. Yeah, um, if we had the measure from the year before, the Falcons were trashed the year before, mm-hmm. uh, like the whole team. Because Julio did not score a touchdown two years ago until week twelve. Yeah. Um, the good thing about this is that now you have to worry about Julio Jones, Hollywood Brown, Brown. Uh, Hollywood Brown. Uh, well, no, A.J. Brown, you mean. A.J. Brown. Hollywood's on Baltimore. Yeah, you got to worry about A.J. Brown. And you got to worry about Derek fucking Henry. Derek Henry. And Tannehill. Scrap yep. up for yards. Listen. So, we're, look, we're looking at this coaching staff. We've got Mike Vrabel, who's done a great job as their coach. Mm-hmm. We have Todd Dowling as the offensive coordinator and Shane Bowen as the defensive coordinator. The defense was a question coming into the season because towards the end of last season, the defense was giving up some nasty looking big plays. Yeah, and that was a, they were a top five defense at yeah. the, in the, towards the middle of the season, and then after that, it was just it was just horrible. So, so their quarterback room 
looks like this. They got Matt Barkley, Ryan Tannehill, and Logan Woodside. Yeah, yeah, that's just you know the 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 murderers row of a uh, of um backup quarterbacks. Tannehill is still the man mm-hmm. here in in like, Tennessee. It's... Barkley has decent potential, but he's never really shown it in the NFL level. Remember when Matt Barkley was supposed to be the future? Remember they, yep. they, they had the things on the ESPN where Matt Barkley... But then again, he was a USC quarterback, so we all know why that happens. Well, he was good until he went to USC and <laughs> everything was fine. Oh, he's the future. Oh, where's he going to go? USC. Oh, oh, oh. So next up, we got the running back room, and it's the king in his court. Of course, we got King Henry, Gahari, Blazing Game, Tory Carter, both fullbacks, Darian Evans, Brian Hill, Jeremy McNichols, and Mekki Sager. Um, Derrick Henry is a monster. Yeah, yeah. Derrick Henry has proven to be very reliable. He hasn't been really hurt uh, in his career. Nope. Nope. So he has proven to be absolutely reliable and absolute stud. He's, um, not, he's not Saquon Barkley. No, he's not Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley wishes he was Derrick Henry. Um, yes. And ne- remember, nobody has still found Josh Norman's body after that stiff arm last year. No, he's, he, he's traveling in space somewhere. He's now, um, in the, he's now in the underneath some Stranger Things. Yeah. No. Now, the key is, is that, of course, we have Julio Jones and we have uh, A.J. Brown. What is the yep, wide receiver room? I was giving to talk about the wide receiver room. We got Cameron Batson, the aforementioned A.J. Brown, Fred Brown, Dez Fitzpatrick, Marcus Johnson, Julio Jones, Mason Kinsey, Racy McMath. Josh Reynolds, Chester Rogers, Nick Westbrook, Ilhine. Um, so their wide receivers may not sound like a lot, but the way this team is built, they don't need a lot from their wide receivers. No, but they, but it's scary though because listen, a few of those wide receivers you mentioned were are rookies, so yep. it's it's that's something to consider when you have AJ Brown and Julio Jones given the opportunity yeah. to pass their knowledge <laughs> onto rookies. And we we and AJ Brown, let's let's call a spade a spade here. This is his fourth year in the NFL. Yeah. He had his best season last year. Mm-hmm. And the reason he had his best season last year, there's a there's a certain duality to this because he had his best season last year because of King Henry. Yeah. But what people forget to talk about and realize is AJ Brown was the only consistent wide receiver this team had. Yeah, because Corey De- Corey Davis was up and down. Um, all last year. Um, and he's not even on the team anymore. Nope, not on the team no more. They actually went into the season uh, with a surprise retirement from the one tight end that used to be on the 49ers, um, the Pro Bowl tight end that we that they used to yeah. have. And so I they forget had, his name. Last, yeah, I forget his name too, but it was a makeshift, makeshift receiving core, and they made it work. And now they added a bunch of young tools to kind of mm-hmm. train them. So it should be fun. And the scariest, the scariest thing about this is, okay, so the potential of this receiving team is the fact that if you don't stack the box, Derrick Henry's going for 250 against you. Mm-hmm. If you stack the box, you have to cover A.J. Brown or Julio Jones one-on-one. And if you try to go somewhere in between, Ryan Tannehill can fuck around and scramble on your ass. And he'll have 100-plus yards rushing in the game. We've seen it multiple times last year. Mm-hmm. But Derrick Henry got us 200, but guess what? Ryan Tannehill had 100, and like we said, he's not afraid to slang that thing. No, nope, not at all. He's, he's not He's not afraid. He's not under the same restrictions that he was in Miami. And uh, he's not a stat quarterback. He's yeah. like, I just want I want yards. I want to score. That's yeah. what he is. Yeah, it's he's kind of like the perfect quarterback that Vrabel wanted. He's, yep. what, he's what Vrabel wanted Marcus Mariota to be. Basically. Exactly. And Mariota got paid in, Oakland, in Vegas, but we'll get to them when we talk about them later. Um... Offensive line is the same as last year. They didn't lose a whole lot. Um, looking at their reserves real quick. Da, 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 nothing really big on their reserves. Defense, this is what hurt them late in the season last year was their defense. Yeah. Um, losing Malcolm Brown is big because he was a great corner. Yeah. Um, he's a shutdown corner. But over in the linebacker court, we got Jayon Brown, Bud Dupree. Bud Dupree's a monster. Yeah. Rashawn Evans is good. David Long Jr., Justin March. They have a solid linebacking core. Yeah. It, it's, it's growing pains. You know, yeah. it is, it's, they learn. They were really good. But, you know, when you as you go through the season, you got to adjust. And I think that in some cases, which is odd for a coach that used to be a linebacker, needs mm-hmm. to get them ready for the playoffs. And he didn't do it 100% like he probably should have. Yep. Uh-oh. And the number one draft pick, who I'm really interested in, is Caleb Farty, this corner out of Virginia Tech. Yeah. 
the kid is special. Well, it made it easy for them to get rid of Malcolm Butler. That it was kind of mm-hmm. we knew that they, they knew what they wanted straight out, you know. And they have Janoris Jenkins on the other side. Janoris Jenkins has been a solid NFL corner for years. Yeah, yeah. And they got a Monty Hooker, Matthias, um, Matthias Farley. This their, their secondary is good. Um, but yeah, their offense is going to be the talk of the town this year. Yeah, it is. It is definitely is. Hopefully, the defense can uh, catch up. So, Big Sim. Yes, sir. Now we got to talk about the schedule because this schedule is something else. Yeah, they have a tough schedule because they were a top three team in the NFL last year. So, here we go. They kick off with Arizona, which J.J. Watt knows his offensive line, so that's going to be fun to watch. Yeah. Um, at Seattle, and they got Indy at the Jets, at Jacksonville, Buffalo, Kansas City, Colts, Rams, at the Rams, Saints, Texans, at New England. Mm-hmm. Then their bye week. Jacksonville at Pittsburgh, San Francisco, Miami, and they finish the season at Houston. So I will tell you from the start, the toughest three, the toughest two games of the season are for the first two. Um, well, well, Arizona, well, Arizona and Seattle? Mm-hmm. That's going to set the tone for the rest of the season because you got two hard-hitting defenses going against each other. Well, with, with um, I don't know if you can call Seattle. I don't know if you call Seattle's defense hard hitting anymore. They were terrible last year. But Russell Wilson's still around. Um, but no, you said defense. Well, I know they were terrible last year. Yeah, but that's true. Okay, but still, this is going to be a defensive test for the for. Basically, you have two defensive tests for Tennessee. Russell Wilson fucking around, um, and you got you got your boy uh, Kyle, Kyler Murray fucking around. TV. The issue with the the Texans fell in, the Titans fell into last year is yes they were a fast paced team yes they could score at will but they couldn't score as fast as teams like Buffalo and Kansas City. Well, which is why going against a team like Seattle and uh, Seattle and Arizona at the beginning of the season that'll get you up to speed real fast, buddy. Yeah, I think it's going to be one and one. I think they lose at Seattle, but they beat Arizona. Okay, right, I'll see you there. So because at Seattle, at Seattle, this early in the season, it's going to be with crowd, with now having a crowd there, it's going to be raucous. Yeah, that's true. So you have the you have the Colts, which we already talked about the Colts and winning depth. That's kind of an yep. asterisk. The Jets and Jaguars, it was a pretty standard game for the Titans. They're yeah. going to probably run all over them. Yeah. Then you got Buffalo and Kansas City back to back. Yeah, that's going to be at the, home. The meat, at home, that's going to be the the meat and potatoes. But see, then you got to deal with the high power passing attack in LA. Mm-hmm. You got to deal with the New Orleans team. You don't know what you're going to get. Uh, and the Texas team, you don't know who's quarterback is. Exactly. We know what you're going to get with New England. That's going to be. You either going to get, either at this point with New England, it's either going to be Cam Newton's team the rest of the year or it's going to be Mac Jones' team. Yep. We'll know by week 12. Yep. And then now we got, of course, the Jaguars, Steelers, Niners. Pittsburgh, the worst 11 to no team in NFL history last year. <laughs> We said it. Did we say it though? Shit. Yes. On our weekly show, we said they are going to lose three of these next games. And guess what? They lost three of those games. They got their asses whooped yep. by a division opponent in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And now they got. And they have the Dolphins and the mystery, the mystery Texans, as they say. They're going to win the division. But man, they they are benefiting from a weaker division here too. Because we have quarterback issues on two of the three team, two of the other three teams. Yeah, um, and we have a rookie head coach at, at the other one. Yeah. So I am going here. I'm going to go twelve and five with the Tennessee Titans. Oh, I'm going to go eleven and six. Eleven and six. I said they're going to win a division, but man, that road to the win. So, so with that being said, that does it for this episode of the NFL preview. Go ahead and say it, James. Go ahead and say it the way you like to say oh, it. The, NF- mean, the NFL. The NFL preview. Thank you. Thank you. Here on Sinful Black Sports and Sinful Black Entertainment. Um, thank you all for joining us. And let us know who you think are going to win these divisions in the comments below. Yes. Until next time. That's my man, Big Sin. I'm your boy, Hollywood J. Black. This is the NFL preview on the Overtime Sports Show, and we are out this thing. Deuces.